we've done a lot of different uh, subjects recently and, and materials. We've been doing water and pastel and watercolour and uh, the acrylics and different methods and techniques. I'd like to share with you a little bit about computer enhancement now because quite a lot of my work in the past I've had fun uh, and then the versatility of being able to use a computer to explore different ways of working and even to change the composition. In this case, in fact, I didn't. Um, I did move things around. As you can see from the, from the photograph here, I have moved things around um, and made them smaller into this canvas because I didn't want all of this space and all the peripheral stuff around it. But I did that from my, from my mind and directly onto the canvas. But I'll show you now how we could have done it with the computer and how I do many things that way. I add figures, I can change uh, things about in the picture itself, I can move objects, I can change the colours, I can change the texture of the lights and darks, the intensity of the colours and so on. It's great fun to do. So I'm going to do this particular picture because I like it in a moment. Uh, I like all of the speckled and, and dappled light going on through here and the different textures, especially the light over the table here and these deep shadows. I thought it would make a nice little subject, almost like a still life, um, for playing all of these really, really strong colours. I'm going to really push these colours further myself. But I'll show you on the computer now how it can be done with the computer, fairly simply, using Coral Draw and Photo Paint or using Adobe Photo if you wish to. Once you know your way around, it's not so difficult. It's like compound interest in anything. Once you know one thing, you know how to do another. Once you know one program, it often follows into another as well. So the computer can be very useful to save sketching everything out, to move things around very rapidly and just get different ideas. It's not a be an end all, it's just another medium, it's just another material to aid you, that's all. What I thought I would do now is just give you a, a, an explanation and a short demonstration on how much can be done with Adobe Photoshop or Coral Photo Paint. These digital uh, methods of manipulating photographs and film can be very, very useful and wonderful. And especially for an artist like ourselves, um, we can change the colours of photographs, we can change the tinting, we can turn old photographs into brighter, clean, newer ones. And we can move parts of photographs one to another, cut and paste, clip, and change the thing totally. Rather than having to do sketches all of the time, we can change things immediately upon using the computer. It's not cheating, it's just another tool, another way of working. You just saw me posterizing a work which is very useful for separating out colours, for seeing the shapes in portions or facets, almost like a jewel, and for pulling the tones out one to another. Now let's look at the way that we can adjust a picture by copying one part or cutting one part and pasting it and moving it around. And then we'll start to look at the way we can take pieces of other pictures, other photographs completely, and adding them into the scene. We can move them around just like we could if they were cut apart. This means that I'm not only changing that one photograph, I can change images from one photograph backwards and forwards to the others. I can change the colours in those photographs, I can change the colour hues, the tones, I can make them brighter, lighter, darker, I can bring out more texture, more detail. There are so many things I can do. And then those images can easily be stored and filed just like a photo album on the computer or put onto disc for later use. Quite often I'll take one or two figures that I like and I'll use them in different compositions yet again, over and again. We can take as many figures as we like, we can cut and change them, take them out, put them back. We can even flip them and turn them over. We can even add one head onto another person. Add what we want, how we want, different skies, different uh, reflections. We can airbrush things on and blend them just like we're using an ordinary paintbrush. Here you see me take a picture from the right hand photograph, copy it, paste it into the left hand photograph and then drag it to the size and position as I want it and I can even flip the figures across to make them look the other direction. Here we go now. And I can move those back into position and if those figures aren't the correct tone or brightness or colours for that particular photograph I can then go and make those figures lighter or darker, warmer or cooler and adjust them before blending them into the photograph to fit that same photograph, they've been, that same composition that they've been placed into. Mm -hmm. 
Having saved them, all you need to do then is print them. Of course you need a good printer for this, but even the different types of ink and papers that you can get will make a difference to the brightness and the quality of your print. Using uh, glossy paper gives a much richer, deeper set of colours and print, but photo and matte paper is also good. Then again, the quality of the ink. If you use the uh, printer's original ink, you usually get a better quality than using a generic ink, but this you will find out by experimentation. Of course, there's a great difference in prices in the different inks. From our tool set, we can either choose to blend the uh, image together when we put one in, or we can actually choose the colour from the painting itself for an airbrush and the different effects for the airbrushes and different brushes that we can use, just like we would if we were actually using the real thing. In my case I usually use Coral Draw because I find it simpler than Adobe and when I finished I put maybe half a dozen or a dozen images onto one sheet and save them as an album. Let me show you an example of that. Well again, now for something very different I hope, um, this photograph, which I'll show you on screen now. And I love it because of the light and the qualities of uh, pattern in it and the abstract shapes. But I didn't like such a scattered composition, so I've drawn it inwards and brought these leaves down, made the chair larger in the composition and cut down to the salient points, the most important points I hope. So something very different, almost like a still life. And uh, again, we'll treat it in this sort of abstract way of one colour shape to another. And I do want this lovely effect of dappled light through this with acrylics. So let's see how this goes. It should be quite interesting, shouldn't it? So here we go then. Um, I'm going to work on this again with, uh, with filters, I think, colours. Hard to know quite where to start. I think I might start with um, the darker colour in the background. Let's see, a little quarter inch one should do this. I shan't need big brushes for this job, I don't think. I'm not going to work in great detail, but I will build up textures as I go along. Let's build up the background tones first of all in it. Um, think about the mid-greens, for instance. I'm going to take some sap green here. A little touch of Prussian blue into that to make myself a lovely dark, dark green into here. This is just to bring the colours out at first. I want to really push these colours, so I'm going to paint around shapes. To paint by numbers, I'm just going to fill in these shapes with 
almost the correct colours at the moment just to get the, the drawing sorted out and know where I am and gradually enhance and build these colours up more and more and more as I go along. And it's a very simple little scene, there's nobody in it, although you will have seen of course in the studies just now on the computer how you could have put figures into it, how I could use figures or put them into it, but I don't have to be all that careful, as long as I just go over the edges slightly it means I can come back and uh, when I paint the, the main objects they'll, they'll stand out again. There's just a, a wash of paint, I'm going to just put a thin coat onto here and you can see how that uh, with the white canvas it makes it a little bit lighter and just this object will just disappear into the background. Right. Be careful because I'm painting at a funny angle here, I'm painting at a Oh, terrible. I just realised now that I'm painting at a, an angle. I'm just getting away the camera a minute because I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, unless I come straight in front of the painting, I start to paint things in perspective. I'm really into a deep blue there almost. And you see now I'm already starting to play some of these really deep colours and get some, have some fun with the... So I'm going to do with these colours as I go on. And a variation of the deep blue and the green going on as we go back up into this bit here. To paint nearly all of this dark because I paint the lighter colours over the top later. Let this Prussian blue come down into here, really pure and beautiful. I'm going to start bringing some purple into it already down here. Let's start looking at these lovely darks that are happening down here. Let's carry on down. This I just need to get rid of at the moment, I just need to get rid of all of this. white. Start to add some warms into it. I'm going to take some um, deep magenta and just add it to this to really a bit more purple to really get a dark, really dark there. Now I'm going across the white rather than um, painting it across the dark because I want to keep so the white keeps the colour that little bit lighter, a little bit more transparent and luminous. And then the warms that come down into the foreground as well. Now, talking about dark, we'll just take a bit of black and we'll just add a bit to that. So I do want it to be a bit darker here. I'm going to go really, I don't know if to use black, but I'm going to in this case. And uh, other colours coming in, like the cerulean blue here, which starts to come over the basket. I have to straighten this out to get the drawing right a bit later, I think, because I just can't see what I'm doing. Got these muffled effects already. Just Making these colours up, I'm going to take a wash of this, just go thinly over the, I don't want these lighter leaves to be later because I can put those in, so I am to lose all the white at the moment and I'll do that by putting a thin coat of green over these white areas here where the lighter leaves are going to be later. It's a beauty of acrylics, we can do glazes one minute and heavier paint, paint another. Okay, much more pure colour already. I'm just starting to add in more, more moves and purples and other colours into this to start to feel these shapes already. I'm in this warm brown grey down through here, just to lose the the white of the table and to find give the uh, the light something to work against when I do paint them in. Be coming across. I want to make a blue-grey, so I'll take some cobalt and just coat the whole of this table in that for the minute. Some of you I know like to try and paint my, copy my pictures, which is very good of you. I'm all for that. They're here to be used and learned from. Don't mind if you copy off my work and try and enjoy taking it a stage further, even into your own work. It's one of the reasons I chose this because I do love this turquoise. I mean, you know me, probably those of you that see me painting a lot already know how much I love this colour turquoise, both in my landscapes and my sea scenes and all sorts. It's a beautiful colour to use. I start to come around here to the table again a little bit as well. So we're actually doing the, the actual painting is happening now. I'm just starting to work on the real colours of the edge of this table. And when you've got it on your brush, if you see it somewhere else or you're going to need it somewhere else, then now's the time to to do just that. See now why I said I wanted to take it over the edges slightly because it doesn't matter if I just link it through there. And how the warm is also coming into the background as well. It's not just the green coming into the, the woodwork, it's the 
bit of glazing now, just a bit of thin coats of light across this. Half inch, and whack in some coats of colour over here. I have to put in uh, a wash of this purple blue here, and greens, just to coat all of that a bit before I put other colours in there. And over the top, the lighter colours over the top. So I just need to lose this. white canvas at the moment and I can see what I've got and where it's going and immediately I do this you can start to see how it'll work because that table is now starting to glow there in the shadow and if I paint all of my darks and medium tones in now then I should be able to come back and put the highlights in and they'll really stand out beautifully. Right so I feel now that I've almost given that enough of a coat of um, under, underpainting. It's just a matter of bringing up the a splash of water just on there, look, 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 just news. Mm -hmm. And to bring up the, um, the mid-tones over the top of this next. I think I've just about established my underpainting. Okay, the colours have sunk a lot and uh, we really want to start working up this underpainting of these colours really to get these colours to shine out as we go along and uh, start to see and to start laying on some of these intermediate tones now to try and get the lighter colours straight away you see if I go this light just how wonderfully that shines out which brushes to use. Be a bit more careful now because these patterns need quite careful drawing and attention around here. I'm going to lay lighter colours over these as well yet. They come down. Little bits just glowing around the edges just to help us feel the edges of this uh, table. I'll be coming in across. Now one trick when doing tonal work is to squint down. If you squint down you cut down the amount of light coming from the colour and you can see the tones more clearly together. So it's a bit of a trick to use if you just want to check on tones of either a photograph or the actual objects in front of you. And if you want to see more colour, widen your eyes even more. You'd be surprised. Think your eyes are open until you do that and you realise in fact you weren't seeing as much as you thought. And there we get that really lovely light dappled effect which won't look as stark and as silly <coughs> once we get the other light colours that are going into this painting on. And then yellow into that same mix and more white and go very, very light cream. Probably need a bit of light blue into this later. And we'll just now look at these highlights coming down the side of the chair here. So I'm still using my filbert brush. And look how light I'm going here. Come around this table. Bring these lights in. the cream first of all, and I'm going to come back with the pink over the top of that. It's a lovely effect of light that we can get. Now we've painted all our darks in, we've painted our, our mid-tones. Now I'm coming in with these very light highlights. Now we've done turquoise up there. I want to come back in with a slightly greener turquoise mix. I'm going to take a little bit of the, I'm going to take some of the turquoise and a wee bit of emerald green, and just make some of this a little bit greener. Let's see what we can do with these fine filberts. There, you can paint very lightly with them, or you can paint quite large areas with them. Have the choice. And there's any of that cool coming down here. Well, I suspect it will be a bit, so we'll bring a little bit of that blue 
green down into these colours here just a link. There's these many, as I say, many of these colours have sunk a bit, so I need to go back into them now with um, some slightly stronger, purer colour. Just try and bring them out a bit. Let's see what's happening. using the paint very thinly and just glazing these little bits of texture in across here to get the feeling of the shadow in the grass, the, the half light in the grass. So I'm working my lights over my darks, gradually building up from the mid-tones, getting lighter and lighter and lighter as I build this up now. And some of the areas will be much heavier so I'm going to let the brush work actually come to itself and then thin it out afterwards. I'm going to flatten out the brush a bit, look, and right back onto the mid-tones up here. Let's look at these lovely blue flowers in the background. I'm going to take quite a deep blue at first. I'll take some ultramarine and just try that out. Yes, that's going to give me the shading I want up there. Even into the pots and places, we'll try to get the shadows working. And again, once it's on the, once it's on the, on the, uh, menu, it's on the table. We'll put a bit into here as well to play these. And hopefully now you're beginning to see how we can make this thing really glow in these shadows. The shadows don't have to be black. Shadows are colour. Shadows, we're not using any, we've used well, one little bit of black is all I've used. I hardly use any black at all. These very subtle differences between the warm and cool blues and greens. And if we've got it there, it's going to start showing somewhere else. So back onto here again. I'm going to, have to come back up into this with quite a bit more blue yet because I've just lost the blooms completely. They've just sunk in. I need to bring them back out again. It takes a little bit of building up, but it's all to do with building up. It's so isn't it? I need to overbalance, so we'll have to bring that light blue back into the leaves here more. Camera's having a job to deal with this because it's so dark in tones. It's um, having a job to pick up the... How I've deliberately then straight off played the cools against the warms with this very light blue going on against the pinks here, deliberately. And now I'm going to start on the yellow. I'm going to start to write a lot more yellow into the, these goals. And I can't go much orange, much more orange now, so I'm going to have to come back to my cools. Come into here some very, very light blues to start playing against these um, warms to make it work. It's a lot of building up, but I think well worthwhile when I've done it. I think it's about time to start playing with some, some greens. I haven't done any, any real greens yet. Let's start building up these mid-tones with the various warmer greens. I'm going to take some emerald and a bit of yellow ochre. And then we'll just look at a much warmer green coming into here. And of course, I've got green there. The chances are, again, it's going to be reflecting elsewhere, so I'm going to bring it around the bottom of the table here a bit more again. I'm starting to use it in the same way by tickling it into tint in these areas behind here and these beautiful bits of bright sunlight coming down there. So it's lemon yellow, a little bit of uh, emerald and white to try and really find these beautiful sunlit greens coming through at the top here. And it's now not a matter of balance. I've got to start really looking at where these leaves go to make sure I'm getting balance as well in this. I hope you can see the colours happening in this all right on film. Uh, but they are starting to work now. And I want to play with those purples a bit more. I seem to have lost them a bit. See what's happening there. Let's take some... Um, lighter purple to see what happens if I start to work put into this a bit more again. And you see we can go darker than the tones that I've done so I've still got space to come back here and just work in some of these. 
Still wonder if I can go a bit brighter with the greens yet too. I'll bring them out. It's a very dark painting so it's very difficult for you to see it on camera. Uh, these cools I'm doing now are just bringing out the, the warm of the, of the chair. These little bits of turquoise I'm playing with here. I'm just going to try a bit of um, cadmium yellow and maybe a little touch of orange and, and white to make myself an even stronger colour in this foreground. A little touch of the orange and the white and let's see how light we can go with that. See if that helps us. I'm going to make the table seem cooler. And again I could probably use some of that just to balance down around some of these edges as well. Just to bring this forward a bit. Need to balance this right hand side a fraction more. It may even be direction of leaves that we need to change like this just to balance the composition a bit more. I've got too many things. And I don't know as I can go much further because I've touched it up enough and there's still something irritating me, there's something still not quite working. Perhaps I need to bring some browns back into the background a little. That seems to have pulled it together somewhat. Perhaps a little bit more light turquoise in the background. Don't take the eye away too much to there because it's uh, the lovely areas in the foreground. I'm not feeling these colours of sunk so much in the foreground here. I want to bring out these magentas more again. They seem to have disappeared again on me. I think that's as far as we're going to go with that. I'll have to make that warm up. Take a bit of green and come back in with the green. See what that does. There we go. So I'll have a coat of varnish and see how it looks in a minute. Take a close look at it, although the sun's glaring in the lens a little bit. I look at that feeling of sunlight shining through on the, on the Provence and uh, right down through this table, through these grasses, catching the light. Oh.